welcome back to this tutorial on image super resolution using the SRCNN network. In the previous video, we generated some low resolution images from the source images that we got from the actual publication of the SRCNN network. So, so we went ahead and we saved those in the images directory. So these were produced by resizing the images using bilinear interpolation. We also defined a couple image quality metrics. We have peak signal to noise ratio, mean squared error, and the structural similarity. And we have this nice convenient compare images function that will call and test all three of those. All right, so we're good to go ahead and move on. And the next step in this process is actually defining the SRCNN model. So we'll define the SRCNN model. And we're going to define this as a function so we can go ahead and call this later. So we'll have def model, definition model. This is the Python function. And this model is actually directly based off of the paper, which we explored earlier, the image super resolution using deep convolutional networks. This is where the SRCNN network was first published and released. So we're going to go ahead and use that same model structure. So the model type, this is going to be a sequential. Sequential, so we'll go ahead and do that. And we went ahead and we imported these earlier. Actually, um, if you're just opening up this notebook again, like I am, you're going to have to run these uh, again. Um, the, the way kernels work with Jupyter, um, as soon as you restart the kernel, you have to redefine your functions. So and re-import your different packages. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do here. So we have all those. We're good there. Those will import above. So we have our SRCNN. This is a sequential model. And now we can simply add model layers. And this is the beauty of using Keras. It's as easy as, easy as SRCNN, which is the model we defined above, add and then your layer type. So we're going to have some convolutional layers here. So conv2d is the standard convolutional layer. This is called filters. This is essentially the number of nodes in the layer. So we're going to start with 128. We have a kernel size of 9 by 9. And again, in these project videos, we aren't going to be diving in the to the theory behind, let's say, uh, convolutional networks or different machine learning algorithms. We're looking more at how do you apply these and how do you actually develop and use them in Python. So we're going to focus on that and stip, skip over um, explaining kind of all of the details of convolutional layers, the math behind convolutional layers, different activation functions, that type of thing, so that we can finish this tutorial in a reasonable time frame, one, and as well um, explore more models and more methods in a more real world type of way. So as I go through some of these, for example, this kernel initializer, this is essentially just the way that the weights are initialized um, when you're first generating the layer. We don't have to spend too much time explaining that. Activation functions do come up a lot. So we're going to be using a rectified linear unit. And this is probably the most common activation function that's used in deep neural networks today. So padding, this is how you handle the borders. I'm going to say valid. Use bias, we want bias in this. So bias equals true. And then input shape, we are going to have none, none, and then one. All right, so what this input shape is specifying here is that we can have any image as long as it's one channel. And so this is actually what that's saying. Doesn't matter what the height is, doesn't matter what the width is, as long as it's one channel. And that's actually how the SRC network handles inputs. It handles image slice inputs. It doesn't actually operate on all three image channels at once. In fact, it was trained on the luminance channel in the Y 
CRCB color space. So we're actually going to have to convert to that color space and then feed this network that Y channel of each of our images. So we'll look at that a little bit more later. And one thing to note is that in your, if you have a .keras directory and this keras.json file, um, this is in wherever your user directory is. If you go into this, you can see that the, there's an image data format and channels last. In some previous projects, we've actually handled this channels first. So this would be switched around and have one comma none none. You can do one of two things. You can write one none none, or you can go in and change your uh, keras.json file there. So if you run into an error here and it's it's not liking this input shape, play around with that. That is likely where the error is coming from. Anyways, that is our first layer. We only have three layers here. So let's add on the second. There are three convolutional layers. So we have a Con2D again. Filters, we're going to start narrowing this down a little bit. So 64 kernel size is going to be a 3x3. Three three. And then once again, the kernel initializer. I actually had a spelling error above. There we go. Initializer uniform. There we go. And then activation function. Activation. There we go. Is going to be the rectified linear unit once again. Padding a little bit different on this one. Same. And then use bias again. We want to do that. All right. So there's that. On to our last layer here, last convolutional layer, out to a single filter here, kernel size is going to be 5 by 5, uniform, there we go. Rectified linear, or actually in this last one, we're going to be using an, a linear activation function. So that's a change there. Then also include the bias in that last one. All right, so there's our three model layers in our sequential model. We're going to define a optimizer. And that's actually going to be the atom optimizer. And we're going to specify a learning rate here as well. And then finally, the last step here is compile the model. Fix that. There we go. So to do that, we simply have our model, srcnn.compile. Optimizer is going to be equal to atom. The loss we're going to use is the mean squared error. And the metrics, we're going to have mean squared error as well. And we actually have to have brackets around this last guy, so let's include those there. Awesome. There we go. Uh, one thing is to note, oh, wait, actually. Before we move on, we need to return SRCNN. All right, so there's there's our complete function, our complete SRCNN model. If we go ahead and run this, it will just run. It doesn't actually build the model yet because we define this as a function. So we have to actually call this function before we want it to compile and build. So now we're going to move on to deploying the SRCNN or the Super Resolution Convolutional Neural Network. So one thing with deep neural networks is they do take a long time to train and they are, uh, well, you have to feed them large amounts of input data. So to kind of get around those different um, constraints, we're actually going to import pre-trained weights to this network. So if you go to the following GitHub page, this user has actually already trained this network 
and has the weights available free for our use on their GitHub page. So that's actually why we have a couple of the parameters here um, is because this is based off their specific implementation of the SRCNN network in Keras so that the weights match up appropriately to the number of filters and kernel size and that type of thing. So if you go to this GitHub page, I actually already have it up here. He has his weights right here, this file 3051 crop weight dot h5 this is going to be the one we want so if you go ahead and click on that you can just download these and once again this is to avoid all of the um, inconvenience of training deep neural networks so somebody many people have already gone ahead and, and done this so we can now use oh i'm sorry about that uh, we can use their their work and and move on from there so this is the beauty of deploying networks instead of building the networks yourself so I'm gonna copy this this weights file I'm gonna come over here go into my tutorial directory where I have my Jupyter notebook and all my other directories and I'm gonna paste this in right here so there we go this is a Keras weights file, and we'll actually be able to load these in now and use them when we deploy this network instead of having to train it ourselves. Something that would take hours and hours on modern GPUs and require mass amounts of input data. All right, so we have that, we have our weights. Before we actually get into making predictions with this model, it's going to be necessary to define some image processing functions. So let's do that first. These are just functions that you are going to have to use when deploying the SRCNN network. And we'll see why as we move forward. So the first one is going to be called mod crop. So we are going to pass it an image and a scale. And so we are going to start with a temp size. So TMP SE is going to be equal to image dot shape size. Then temp size. We'll take the first two here. So we're, we're dropping the channel and then size is going to be equal size minus NP dot mod SC scale. What this is doing is ensuring that the dimensions of our image are going to be divisible by a certain scale. Um, that is what actually this mp.mod is going to return. It's the remainder for uh, the division between this integer and this integer right here. So we are going to crop this and make sure that it is um, the correct size and, and doesn't have any hanging um, remainders there. So image now is going to be the image and zero to the size zero. And then one to size one, just like that. All right, so we're good to go there. Let's return this image. And this is actually going to be necessary because when we run images through this SRCNN network, based off the, the kernel sizes and the convolutional layers, we're actually going to lose some of these outside pixels. And so our images are going to get slightly smaller. And that's why it's necessary to be a nice, even divisible um, image size. One other thing we're going to need is a, a function called shave. So image and a border size. So we're, again, this is just a straightforward crop of the image. So we'll have border minus border, border to negative border. So cropping off the border size from both the, the left and the right, top and the bottom, and then returning the image. Oh, I forgot the end bracket here. We're going to have to do this a couple times, so it's just nice to define this function ahead of time so that we don't have to type this out each and every time we shave an image. All right, so there's those. Those are our necessary image functions. Let's go ahead and just do shift enter and we'll, we'll compile those there. Now we can actually get to defining 
the main prediction function. This is where we're actually going to call our model and we are going to use it to do super image super resolution. All right, so to start, definition. Oh, sorry about that. We'll get a extra space in here. We'll have a Python function called predict, and then we'll have an image path actually. Not so not a actual image, just the path to that image. And the first thing we're going to do here is load the SRCNN model with weights. And so that's really easy since we already defined this function above. We can just say SRCNN is equal to the model, open brackets, and this is going to build and return the model above that we defined with these parameters and network structure. So that's great, we have that. And then very easy in Keras, when you're loading weights to a Keras model, you just type the model name, dot load weights. And now we are actually going to pass the file name um, of that weights that we, of those weights that we just downloaded. So that's 3051 crop weight 200.h5. I'm not sure why or what naming convention that user was using, but either way, this is the name of the weights file, so that's what we're going to use. All right, there we are. So after we build the model, we have it compiled. Now we have to load in our low resolution images and we're also actually gonna load in the reference images at this time too so we can calculate our image quality metrics after we do super resolution. So load the degraded and reference images. So first things first, let's split the path and the file name so we'll have os.path.split image path. So this is going to give us the directory as well as the file name. So degraded, we can have cv2.imread image path. So we'll pass it the degraded path. But for the reference image, we're actually going to have to do cv2.imread. And this is going to come out of the source directory. So we have source, um, and let's get a couple brackets in here, dot format, and substitute in that file name that we stripped above. Since these have the same naming conventions in both of these directories, it will load the correct, correct images that way. All right, there we go. All right, and now we get into pre-processing the image. So pre-process the image with mod crop. So reference, we're going to go ahead and crop it so that when we are use, or calculating our image quality metrics later, we have the same size of image to what we produce with our SRCNN network. So there's that. And we're also going to crop the degraded image. So this is just calling this function above, making sure it's nice and divisible by, by three in this case. All right, so there, we're good. We're good to go there. And we mentioned earlier that the SRCNN was trained on the Luminance channel in the YCRCB color space. So what we have to do is convert the image to YCRCB so this is a three channel image. It's the lum luminance, Y, the red difference, and the blue difference. So this is just a specific color space. One of the reasons that we are using OpenCV in this project is that OpenCV does a very good job of converting back and forth between this color space. So SRCN, we'll add a little note here, trained on Y channel. So to do this, we're just going to generate a temporary image here. So we'll have temp equals cv2.convert color degraded. And we pass the parameter here, cv2.color underscore BG, bgr to ycrcb, just like that. 
And so one thing to note is that when OpenCV loads an image, which we did up here with imread, it loads it in as BGR. So blue, green, red, the blue channel actually comes first. Um, some of the other packages like um, pill image loads them in RGB. So it's just one thing to keep track of here when you are using OpenCV. Just remember when you first load in images, it's in the BGR color space, not the RGB. So that's why we are converting from the BGR to the YCRCB. All right, so there we go. There's that. And now remember, our network can only handle one dimensional inputs, or well, three dimensional inputs, but of depth one, just one channel here. So what we need to do is generate an image slice. So we are going to create image slice and normalize in these next couple of lines. So we'll call that image Y. And what we're going to do here is create just a num NumPy array that we are going to fill in with data. So we'll have one temp.shape zero, temp.shape one, and then a one as well. So we have four different dimensions here. This is going to be the width, the height, and then one channel. And this is essentially like a batch size one. This is what's going to get passed to the network. So there's that. What we actually want as well is we're going to have this as a D type. So data type equals float. And then we can go ahead and fill in that data. So zero, just first index here. And we're going to use some colons. So every every point in these channels, um, just that first channel here is going to be equal to the temp. Just that first, first channel, so the luminance channel, all the pixels in that channel dot as type float. So we're passing them in as float values, which is good because we have float values in the NumPy array. These have to match up here and here. And then we're going to divide it by 255. So these are all going, going to be normalized between 0 and 1. It's always a good idea to normalize your inputs to any machine learning algorithm. Um, the SRCNN network is no different. It was trained on inputs that were normalized between 0 and 1. So that's why we are dividing by 255 here. All right, so we're good to go. We have our image slice. It's the Y channel, which is the first channel, index 0 out of this image that we converted to the YCRCB color space. And now we have the moment of truth. We get a perform super resolution with the SRCNN network. And so we are going to pass this image to our to our model and have it predict an output. So we'll say pre, because we're going to process this after the fact, is going to be srcnn.predict y batch size, we have to tell it as well, is equal to 1. Again, that is why we had an index here as well because we are saying essentially a batch size one there. Okay, so we have that. This predicts an output, which is going to be called pre. And then we're going to post process that output. So pre is still normalized between zero and one because that's what the inputs were passed in as. So we're gonna do pre times equal 255. So multiplying every single pixel by 255. One thing that we do have to do, since we are multiplying this, and sometimes we have rounding errors, we are going to say if we have any pixels greater than 255, just go ahead and set them to 255 even. Similarly, if we have any values that are going to be less than 0, let's just go ahead and set those to 0 as well. All right, and these are still float values, so let's convert back. We'll say pre.as type np 
u int 8. So we have integer values now. All right, so there's our post processing. Now what we want to do, since this is still, this is only the luminance channel here in the pre, we want to copy Y channel back to image and convert to BGR. So temp, let's go ahead and crop this six. If we actually went at, we went ahead and we put in some print statements here, we could play around and, and actually look at the specific dimensions. But for now, just go ahead and trust me that it's going to lose three pixels on both the left and the right, top and the bottom. So if we go ahead and shave this with a border of six, we can crop it appropriately there. So it's the same size as our output. And then what we're going to do is for this first channel, the Y channel, we are going to copy in the output of our network. So there's that. So we're keeping the red difference, the blue difference, channels one and two in this image, this temp image, which is in the YCRB color space. And that first one, we're copying in our output, our luminance channel. And then what we're gonna do from there is actually convert back to the BGR color space. So CV2, convert color, temp CV2 dot color and what we're going to do this time is the YCRCB to BGR. So back to the blue green red color space um, that we started in originally. All right good to go there. One more step let's remove border from reference and degraded image so that all of our images are the same size. So we're just going to call our shave function here reference.as type np.uint8 6 uh, degraded is going to be equal to shave degraded.as type np.uint8 comma 6 all right there we go so now all of our re our reference image our degraded low resolution image and our high resolution output are all going to be the same size, so that's good. We can calculate our image quality metrics now. So I'm gonna make another scores list here, because what we wanna do is we wanna actually, just like we did above, we wanna calculate these three image quality metrics for the low resolution in comparison to our original reference image, as well as we wanna calculate all three of those for our high resolution output compared to our reference image. So if we do a scores.append compare images, the first one's going to be degraded versus our reference image. And then the second one, compare images, is going to be our output versus the reference images. So there we go. Scores for both of these. Finally, let's return images and scores since we are still in a function here called predict. We're going to return reference image, degraded image, output, and then scores. Format that there. Okay, so we should be good to go here. Let's go ahead and run this cell. And again, this is just a function. We haven't called it yet, so it's going to compile right away. Let's actually go ahead and call, pass an image into this function and see how this works. So let's do reference, degraded, output, and scores. Our outputs here is going to be predict images. And let's uh, pass it the flowers image. These are bitmaps, BMP. So everybody likes flowers. Let's pass it that image. All right, and let's go ahead and print out the scores. All scores for all images. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sneak 
um, back up here where we printed these out and I'm gonna copy this line simply saving time here I don't want to type all this back out you're welcome to do so if you so desire so I'll copy that in we don't have a file name here though so I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm gonna say degraded image and then we can have our scores here so actually in our scores though our scores is going to have two separate lists of three scores each so we got to add on here so if we're in our first image or our first for the degraded image this is going to be zero zero that would be the peak signal to noise ratio and then zero one mean squared error and zero two so these are all the scores for the degraded image because in this function we actually append those scores first all right so there we go let's copy this do it one more time and let's say reconstructed so our reconstructed image now is going to be a little bit different it's the second one in that list so we're going to change these to one index one so we have index zero above and then index one all three scores as well for those all right very good scores are nice but come on let's actually look at some images so let's display images as subplots so we can see them side by side so we're going to use the pie plot package for this so we start with a figure and an axis is going to be equal to plt dot subplots so one so one row three columns since we have three images and I'm going to define a figure size just to make these look uh, look nice all right and now we actually this is just generating the pie plot figure we actually have to add on to these um, our specific images now so if we index these so this is going to be the first subplot we can say I'm show and so we actually have to do some special conversions here. I'm show assumes RGB images. And we already know that CV2 loads images as BGR. So when we pass these images to I'm show, we actually have to convert color back. So we'll have our reference image. I'm going to say color BGR to RGB. So there we go. We have those. And this is just based off the way I'm show works, assumes RGB. If you actually go ahead and just pass this reference image to this without the convert color, you'll get a very neat, um, weird looking image because the channels get all mixed around. But that's okay, we can, we can convert that there. So let's actually set a title to, so we know what we're looking at, we'll say original very original title there <laughs> axis one so our second subplot cv2 dot convert color our degraded image will show next so cv2 dot color bgr to rgb there we go there's that axis one we want a title as well Let's set some titles here we'll say degraded or low resolution I've been using those kind of interchange interchangeably finally our third subplot x2 index 2 I'm show convert dot or CV2 dot convert color output CV2 color BGR to RGB and we'll add on a nice title here once more set title SRCNN there we go one last thing just because I like pretty pictures let's remove the X and Y tick marks so we'll say a for loop for this for axis in axis we'll just do X dot set underscore X ticks and we'll just pass it an empty list here that'll that'll leave them blank axis dot 
set y ticks and we'll pass it an empty list there as well all right so we should have our nice images here as subplots all nicely titled and we're going to be printing out the scores as well this is just for the flowers one of our images so let's go ahead and see if this works so we'll run this and we're thinking we're thinking we're doing super resolution remember this has to call this entire function so there's a lot of conversions and stuff that it has to do but it shouldn't take too long so let's see if this pops up here in a second and it's actually taking longer than I assumed it would but we'll just give it a second to think ah and here we go we have our scores and here we have our images so here we go here's the beautiful results we have our original image nice high quality our degraded or low resolution image looks a little blurry and wham here we have our reconstructed output our enhanced image once again looking pretty similar to the original image just based off an eye test let's take a look at the scores peak signal to noise ratio started out at 27 went up to 29 so an improvement in peak signal to noise ratio mean squared error went down and our structural similarity went up as well so on all three image quality metrics our output from the SRCNN network was an improvement on our low resolution image and just looking at these as well I, I mean this image looks much better to me than this low resolution degraded image so wow really cool it works frankly very well um, it's still surprising even to me when these spit out beautiful nice high resolution images from these um, low resolutions or degraded images that we produce so that's uh, that's pretty impressive really cool and this is using the SRCNN network that we defined here we didn't train this network what we went ahead and did is we loaded in pre-trained weights that another individual had taken the trouble to produce and share with us and uh, open sourced through github so that was really nice uh, thank them for putting in that time to train this network for our use and again the uh, original authors released a trained network it was just a matlab implementation of the srcnn matlab has some license restrictions and so um, we don't use that as much just because it costs money all right so this is just one image though let's uh, go ahead and do this for all of them so we can copy a lot of this because this is what we're going to be doing but let's loop through all those files in that image folder that we produced so we'll say for file in os dot list directory images don't need the backslash there and then we'll perform our super resolution so let's go ahead and we'll take all of this that we just defined above scroll up a little bit here there we go copy it control C bring it down here and paste that in so we're gonna have to format this a little bit let's uh we'll tab this so it's all shifted over so it's all in this for loop here let's add some uh, comments so we'll say perform super resolution we actually don't want to print out all of this information but what we do want to do is actually tack these on into different labels so for our degraded right after here when we set the title let's go ahead and say axis one and we'll do set X label here and go up here let's copy in all of this information so peak signal to noise ratio mean square to error all the way over get all the scores so control C so that oh we need some uh, make sure that's a string there using the apostrophe all right so the X label under these images is going to be the corresponding peak signal to noise ratio mean square to error and structural similarity 
and we don't need this last new line character there either. All right, and then let's go ahead and do the same thing for our reconstructed image. So we'll say axis two equals set x label equals copy in this information up here. Control C, paste that in. Get our apostrophe, make sure we are string here. Get rid of a new line character. So here's our three scores. Everything's good there. We have the right parentheses. All right, let's go ahead and delete this. We don't need to print them out. We just want to append it to the image here. We're removing the X and Y tick marks just like before. But now actually, let's go ahead and save the image. See all these outputs together. So we'll say print saving and we'll pass it the file name here so saving file and we'll say fig this is the plt figure save fig and we'll do output slash um, brackets dot png so we're actually going to have to make a directory over here let's make an output directory there we go, we have that. So now let's do a dot format. So we wanna pass it the file here, but the file actually has an extension attached to it. So what we're gonna do is an os.path.split extension for file. And we'll take the, the first index here. What this does is it splits a file name with an extension into both the file name and the extension as a, a list or a tuple. So that first item in that list is going to be the file name, and then the second one is going to be the extension. We want to save these as PNGs, so let's just go ahead and take that first file name. All right, there's that. Since we're going to be running through all of the images or all of the files in this directory, let's do a plt.close so we don't end up with 17 open pie plot figures will save us some hassle there. All right, let's see if this works. Let's go ahead and click uh, shift enter. All right, so it's thinking it's going to be running through all of the files in this directory, generating an output much like this for all of them. However, it's going to be saving each and individual one. So in a moment here, ah, yep, there we go. So it just saved the first one, just saved the second one. It's going to go ahead and start looping through all of these. So it's going to do all 17 images there, producing PNG outputs in each case. Something that looks a little bit like this. So let's go ahead and go see those. So we go over to our tutorial directory. We can go ahead and go into this output and we see these, oh, we actually messed up a little bit here. Let's go ahead and stop this first. And we actually passed this, <laughs> the image's name instead of um, the in actual file for each one. So we're gonna have to change that. So we wanna pass images. We don't wanna run flowers over and over again. We've already seen that output. Format file, there we go. Um, we missed that, or I missed that, when I copied down all this information from above. All right, so this time it'll be doing it for the separate files in that directory. Let's try this one more time, see what we got. Because <laughs> right now we have about six or seven images that look exactly like this one. All right, there we go, so. Apparently we have our baboon is saving. See if we can get a couple more before we go look at these. There we go. All right, let's let's meon, meander over here. Ignore these. Those will get overwritten as this continues to go on. Let's pull open up these first ones though. We can look at these. So this is the baboon image. You see again, low quality, low resolution, not quite as blurry as the flowers, uh, but still, um, peak signal to 
Noise ratio improves, mean squared error improves, and structural similarity improves, as well as the output looks pretty good. So there's that. Here's the baby picture. Peak signal to noise ratio improved, mean squared error, structural similarity, all improve, looks good, high quality. Here we go, Barbara. Kind of blurry, not blurry, high resolution. Excellent job on this one here. Improves by 0.05 on the structural similarity. The bird here, looking pretty good on the output there as well. Here we have the butterfly wing that we looked at earlier. So you can see, I mean, this output here in some of these lines and the circles, um, the improvement on the quality from our low resolution here is substantial. And that's actually reflected by these change in scores. The mean squared error goes way down. Peak signal to noise ratio goes up. Structural similarity goes way up. And that's actually reflected in what we see in this image here. Here we go. We got a couple more. Some boat pictures, improvements there. We have an animated picture, some cartoon pictures. So it doesn't even matter if it's an actual image or a computer generated image. We we're actually make, able to make some substantial improvements there as well. So let's see if these are all coming up. Yep, we've got all of these going here. So you can go ahead and look through all of these different images if you like. Improvements on all of these. You see low resolution image and then after the super resolution we have our high quality output so those are all saved to your output folder and congratulations you have just deployed the super resolution convolutional neural network in Keras using OpenCV for image processing and matplotlib for image displays this was a in my opinion, an awesome, awesome project to do. It's always fun to work with deep neural networks. The outputs of these algorithms are very impressive and just frankly, the capabilities and what they're able to do blows me away on a, on a daily basis. So that brings us to the end. Thanks for following along. I hope you learned a lot, not only about OpenCV and Keras, but just Python programming in general. I hope you continue to follow along with the future projects. Thank you very much.